chapter 5, part 3. We're going to look at the little word Q, Q-U-E, which occurs so often in French and has many, many different re, uh, meanings. It's one of the more complicated things of uh, French, but we're going to start off as Q as a conjunction of two independent clauses. Okay, what is an independent clause? An independent clause is a subject and a verb that can stand alone. It's, it's more than just a phrase, which is an expression, but a clause is like the subject and verb that can stand alone. So here are some examples. I believe. It's not a super complete sentence, but it works. I believe. It's got a subject and a verb. Here's another one. You are pretty. That has a subject and a verb. It's also got a, um, a predicate, an adjective there, but it's an independent clause because it can stand alone and it has a subject and a verb. Now in English, they can be joined together by the word that. And that's going to be the basic translation of the word que. That's the one that you should try first to see if it works. If not, you can start looking for other things. So in English, we would say, I believe that you are pretty. So that's, we've got the word that joining I believe and that you are pretty. Now, note, we can also say in English, I believe you are pretty, and it makes perfect sense. We can drop out the word that. In French, you can never drop out the word that. So I encourage you in your translation to leave the word that in. It just kind of makes it easier to compare between the French and the uh, uh, English. It also removes ambiguities. I know when I write English, I always leave that in. I don't drop it out when I can, just because I think it makes sentences, especially long, complicated sentences, easier to uh, uh, follow. Let's look at another example. We have one independent clause. Now we're looking at an example in French. On dit. That means one says or they say. So D comes from dire, to say. L'expérience n'a pas réussi is another independent clause. Experience can be an experience, but it's also the word for um, experiment. Because experiment. We learn by experiments, we learn by experience. It's the same concept in uh, uh, French. So that's the word for experiment. Uh, N'a pas réussi. We've got réussi as a verb. That's its past participle. The experiment did not succeed. So it's past tense with N, ne pas, around the conjugated verb. So we can combine these with on dit que l'expérience n'a pas réussi. We put the que there to connect them. And we, that can be translated as, they say that the experiment was not successful. Or, they say that the experiment did not succeed. Or one says that the experiment was not successful. And so on. So that's how we would translate this. Another example. Je crois. That comes from croire. To uh, believe. Je crois. To a foo, that comes from crazy, kind of like the word folly comes from there. Uh, je crois to a foo, je crois que tu es fou. I believe that you are crazy. So we could say I believe you are crazy, but it's, let's put in a, I believe that you are crazy because it's less uh, uh, it, it's less ambiguous. Now, a similar sense of the word cuz when we use it as a relative pronoun. So relative, whoops, relative pronouns com combine together two statements into one. Typically, uh, que will be translated as that, which, or whom. So if I say, this class is confusing, and I love this class, see how both sentences have the word class? If I want to combine these sentences, I don't have to repeat the word uh, this class. I can replace it with the relative pronoun which. This class, which I love, is confusing. So the main part of the sentence is this class is confusing. That was the first sentence here. Which I love, 
which is the relative pronoun. Its antecedent is immediately before it, this class, and we know that which I love means I love this class. So that's how we use which as a relative pronoun in uh, uh, English, and we're going to use the same structure in French. So notice that que can be used as a relative pronoun replacing a direct object. See, it's I love this class. The direct object was this class, and which replaced it. So we're going to use que for the uh, there. Now, if it's not a relative, uh, pro if it's not a direct object, we're not going to use could. We're going to use other relative pronouns. So let's look at a sentence. Les savants sont partis. So savant is a, um, uh, a word for scientist. The scientists, and here we've got partir. This is a past participle, parti. The scientists have left. Another sentence. Nous connaissons. Connaître means to know. Connaissons is uh, the new form. We know ces savants, these scientists. So we have the scientists in both uh, sentences. The scientists have left. We know these scientists. Then we can combine them. The savants que nous connaissons sont partis. The scientists whom we know have left. Now, you might not be used to using a uh, whom. You might translate this as the scientists that we know have left. Yeah, that's a bit awkward in English because since the scientists are people, we wouldn't say that. You might be able to say who, the scientists who we know have left. But who in English is rather for the subject. But the subject of the knowing is we know, and the people that are known are the savants. So the savants are the um, direct object. And so rather than using who to replace a direct object in English, we use whom. So the scientists whom we know have left. Who do we know? The scientists. So when whom uh, uh, is is used when we use the uh, direct object. So it's not, we shouldn't really ask who do we know, we should ask whom do we know. But if we ask who knows the scientists, who is uh, uh, replacing the subject, not the uh, direct object. Il a vu son ami. He has seen his friend. Il adore son, uh, il adore son ami. He adores his friend, or could be her friend. He saw his friend. He adores his friend. We can combine them without repeating son ami. Il a vu son ami. He has seen his friend whom he adores. He has seen his friend whom he adores. Is how we would combine them as using que as a relative pronoun. So work on these exercises. They all have k in there and see what you get and then look at the next video to see the answers.